Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Totem Tuesday. I know it's been a while, um, but this Totem Tuesday is a first from my Glastonbury mansions and I'm really excited and pleased to be getting back into filming some Totem Tuesday videos. There's quite a few I've got planned so far and as always the animals are kind of <laughs> I'm seeing which animals are, are stepping forward, which animals are coming forward for the for the videos. The ones I've got planned for next for the coming weeks are the lynx and also the swan. Though I'm sure some more animals will pop forward before then or in, in the meantime. Uh, this video that I'm doing today is about the heron. And it's a video I meant to do probably about four or five months ago when I was visiting my mum who lives in the Scottish borders and the, no, the heron really appeared to me quite a lot then because um, of the River Tweed and along the Tweed you can see, especially by the sea or on the banks, you can see herons and um, I'm, I'm really fascinated and mesmerised by them. It's only this year really for me personally that the herons come about as a animal that I've noticed or obviously noticed and I've, you know, uh, in a totem way or in a, a lesson, life lesson way. and. Obviously, obviously, <laughs> I've moved to Avalon, I've moved to Glastonbury or just outside and it's all marshland. The, the area I'm living is sort of known as the Avalon Marshes, uh, the marshes. And um, so therefore you have a plethora of, of um, beautiful bird life. And the heron has been such a beautiful sight. Um, when I've been driving, there's a lovely road that goes from where I live to Glastonbury and just the sight of the heron standing there, waiting there patiently. It's just, I have to keep really try my best to keep my eyes on the road, not staring at the heron, end up in the marshes, which is very likely to happen. And then also, what I was wondering today, if I was gonna do the episode on the lynx or the heron, I was kind of playing with it in my head because the lynx is an animal that I've got a closer bond with, a more long-term bond with. And then I was just driving home from the shops and um, I saw this twilight and this lovely shape appeared over the road. I went, wow, look at the road. <laughs> and I thought, it's a beautiful big bird, very graceful. And then as I looked again, it flew back over um, much clearer to me. And it was a beautiful, beautiful, graceful, large heron. I thought, well, that's a sign and no mistake, Mr. Frodo. So um, here we are doing this Totem Tuesday on the heron. So I know that's um, a totem that a lot of people have resonated with and asked for a video about, so I hope, you know, and I also would love to hear your, as always, hear your myths and knowledge and learnings about the heron. First of all, let's look at the, the aspect of where the heron lives. The heron embodies three of the four or five elements. Mm, the, the heron embodies water, because you'll see herons by water, they, they eat fish, they stand in the marshes in the shallows and, and, and wait. So water, which is the great unconscious, which is the great primordial cauldron of life, which is our dreams, our psyche, our emotions, that beautiful depth. And in the water, the heron will go for the fish, which represents the seeker's prize, the wisdom. Um, and also the air. Obviously herons fly so beautifully, despite how large they are, so beautifully and gracefully through the air. So the, you've got the unconscious energy with the water and the conscious mind and the rational and the intelligence and the wisdom and the grasp of, of concepts through air. And as they glide through the air, they can represent that detachment from everything and they can represent, um, I guess, the gazing wisdom, the, the understanding of the bigger picture um, and then also you've got the earth element because they will be rooted very strongly in the earth and in the banks of the water. So with the totem of the, the heron, you have those three elements that you can work with very, very strongly, being rooted and grounded in the earth, which we'll come back to in a second with herons. So I think it's really important. Um, the water, which is something we just feel, we see them with, so it's, it's kind of logical, and the air. Um, only missing fire, but you know, that's fine. There's plenty of fire, we can do it elsewhere. But anyone working with it as, as a totem, we can look at those areas of their life, where, how are they um, on an emotional level? Are they really, you would say that, see that if someone is 
who has a heron as a totem would be really, really in touch with their emotional side. Maybe too in touch, maybe lost in their emotions at times, but deeply aware and in their dream world, in their intuition and in their emotions. Um, people who work with heron as well have an amazing ability to stay grounded and, and strong, even when other people wouldn't be able to. So we'll come to their tiny, thin little legs. Um, we've got a couple of pictures from beautiful tarot deck. Well, two beautiful tarot decks, actually. Um, the Wildwood Tarot, which I adore, by Mark Ryan and um, John Matthews, etc. All these will be below about the tarot decks because they really are worth looking at. And you can see with the hair in there, such skinny little legs, uh, making beautiful shape there. Um, and with this one as well, the Animal Tarot, um, Animal Wisdom Tarot, which I love also, and I talk about in my Tarot and D videos. The beautiful heron is a two of swords there. Again, the skinny, beautiful skinny legs. So, <laughs> um, you don't need big pillars, big chunky, strong, concrete pillars to be strong. A big bird can be very strong on something that doesn't seem visually to be strong. So it's showing you the inner strength and the ability to be balanced and you don't need all that size and <laughs> chunkiness to make yourself grounded, earthed and strong. The heron is very strong in the moving water. The moving water which would topple over a lot of people. Especially if you moving water, let's say it's emotion, let's say it's unconscious, let's say it's a tides. The heron is really, really calm and strong in things that may sway others emotionally and may sway others um, psychically. So they, and, and look at their physical factors as well. They've got amazing eyes that can stalk and can see and, and focus. So focus is a very important thing. And their sword or spear-like beak as well. So reference to swords and spears is something that you'd look at as well if you're working with um, the heron as a totem. totem. It's called the king of vessels, the king of cups here. It's often thought as the king of the marshlands in, in myth and folklore. The other energies that we can look at when we, when we, when we look at heron is as of a solitary nature. So the heron is pretty much a solitary bird, um, apart from when they meet, well, for the, they congregate for, for, for mating and for breeding and for child nesting times. But apart from that, they're very, very solitary. So people who work with um, a heron as a totem are very comfortable with their own um, company and are very comfortable being solitary, being, being alone. In fact, they could be out there loners, but in a way people want to follow them because the wisdom of the heron, heron is so strong that people are very drawn to following heron people. So even if they are someone who's very much in their own power, someone who's very much in their own truth and aware of who they are, um, people will be drawn to listening to them. Um, so they have a, a sense of assertiveness, a sense of inner calm, and a sense of knowing what they're doing and knowing where they're going. It can even be a little bit aloof sometimes, but they don't seem to care, they're happy in their own world. If you can imagine when you see, when I mean, especially it really hit me more when I was in London, when I was um, walking in Hampstead Heath, and you could see um, herons on the, in the ponds there with a busy, babbling, bubbling life going on around, and they were so still. They just didn't care about the rest of what was going on. They were in their own moment, in their own space. And they almost seemed so out of place in that busy time because they're in their own time. And I feel like here when I see them, it's much more that this is their time, this is their space. You know, it's not quite so busy and populated and crazy. It's more elemental. So when I see a, a, a heron now, I feel they're very much of this place, being in the moment, being in that magic. And I also remember, I think it does link his little story, but it links in with something about um, herons that a few years ago, after a party in, a few, in the winter, a little bit tipsy, and a few of us wandering back through the heath, and um, this silly guy, um, so bless him, but he saw the heron on the water in, in the frost, and bless him, because he did think, oh my word, it's frozen to the water, and he went to call the RSPCA to say, look, you know, the heron, it's frozen to the water, it's standing still, it hasn't moved, and the RSPCA were like, that's what they do. They don't move. It's like, oh, <laughs> they felt a bit foolish. But they, it brings to the point that um, that they don't, you know, they they can stand very, 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 very still without a twitch for a long time. If you watch a heron, you can always walk past them and go, oh my gosh, you know, that's not a statue, that's something real, alive. That's so still, so composed, so in that moment, so waiting, and they stand tall for a very, very long time. Sometimes on one leg, which teaches us balance, of course. And then when 
the moment is for them when they know that's moment, time to go, time to hunt. They, they're gone with their spear, sword-like beak. They seize and they claim what they want. They take it out and it's theirs. So what can that teach us? That can teach us so many things. How many of us can st sit still for even a few minutes without twitching or getting m moving? We're very busy, twitchy people. <laughs> and it can teach us a great lesson in being calm and in, in stillness. Maybe um, if you're working with heron as a totem, you could work with yoga and balancing as well as, as meditation and stillness. But being so aware in that stillness of what is going on around you. So maybe spend some time being really still and watching the world around you, watching, some, watching life unfold around you, but not moving yourself. And this teaches about stillness, about inner peace, about tranquility. But also, another lesson that's quite hard for us people to learn <laughs> is when you see the opportunity, you take it. You don't flinch, you don't think, should I, shouldn't I? Should we do that? Is that a good idea? Would I upset someone? They, you, know, you know that's the time and you go for it. So that's something amazing the heron can teach us as well, which, you know, both things are very hard for us people to, to, to work with. So it's great lessons to go on that inner gut knowing, now is my time, that is my opportunity, I am going to go. And also to kind of wait for that time as well. So patience. Any people that struggle with patience, um, it's, it's a really, really good um, energy and totem to, to work with. I also feel as well that you can't make a totem lesson with a heron come to you. The heron comes to you when heron is ready to come to you. Um, so whether you're a life path heron um, person or you've, the herons come to you to, to teach a specific lesson, you cannot command that animal to come to you, it will come to you when it's ready and I've really really felt that myself um, this year but especially over the last month or so, uh, every time I pull a card from this deck it usually is um, this one <laughs> and it's a two of feathers which is two of swords which is very heron like, it's waiting and knowing and trusting that inner deep feeling. So Sitting at the sitting with your emotions, understanding your emotions, and being strong with that is a really big lesson. Now, what else have I written? Lots of things down. If, if Heron comes into your life, you may think it's time to look at the deeper um, aspects of what your of, of your life, the deeper flows, deeper patterns, the undercurrents. It c can be a time when it's showing you that it's time to work on your own. Not to, again, it's not meaning you have to be lonely, but it's a, a, being on your own is awesome and. Heron can come to show you that it's okay to be on your own and that you have great strength and great peace and tranquility from your own company and from learning. Um, it can also remind you about being grounded in the earth before you go on any of these ventures, before these psychic ventures or emotional ventures. Really make sure you're grounded. That one skinny leg <laughs> planted into the earth is showing you it's cool. It's cool to, you know, you, can, you have to withstand those storms. You need to be strong in your own um, sense of self. Um, fishing and hunting, they are supreme hunters and fishers, so, and they get what they want, they are resourceful, they are shrewd, they are intelligent, you can try and trick them, but they will come back with something better, <laughs> so um, it can be a lesson in your own, how do you get what you want, how do you go about getting what you want, all power animals will teach us this, all totems will teach us this, they all want to food, feed, they all want to not be eaten by other animals, all of the totem animals, of course they do, so we look at how our totems act in those situations, and I was reading this story about, um, you know, about this um, heron that was eating this family's prize koi carp worth hundreds of dollars. And you can try and stop it from doing it, but it will find a way. You can coax it, try different things, try to trick it. But if heron's got a taste of something and heron wants something, well, heron was very resourceful in getting what it wants. It's an amazing, as I said, amazing hunter. So take on all the lessons of heron to bring in into your life if you want something you're going to have to be patient maybe you're going to have to know how to wait and see the signs and when you see that chance you're going to have to go for it you may need to use into your own intelligence your own resourcefulness to go around getting things but heron isn't shy about doing those things um some of the things that i wrote down little pointers little totem tick list that you find in all the videos the assertiveness that comes through from the heron, because the energy of heron is assertive, it's I'm here, I'm in charge, I don't need your approval, I'm not keep trying to keep up with you guys, I'm doing my own thing. So there's a uniqueness and assertiveness with heron, which I love, I think that's great, and um, because then we can all work with that we're not bothered, what do they think of me, what are they doing, I'm happy with what I'm doing. Um, but the assertiveness on it, if you look at the negative side of things, can come as aggressiveness. So working with assert assertion but not aggression, or working on how we channel our aggression being aware of our aggression and not being afraid of it, but knowing how to channel that. Um, obviously very self-determined, balance, as we've mentioned, vigilance,
peace and quiet. Something so peaceful to watch um, a, a heron waiting, and it can bring that sense of peace into ourselves. Um, the power of water, the power of the emotion. So maybe something we can really not. When heron comes up, we don't ignore our feelings. We don't go, oh, that can wait till later. Our feelings are calling to us to listen. Um, I'm going, to go, I'm going to go on a little bit about um, about life and about death and rebirth. Just a second. I know I don't want to go on too long. Um, the underworld. So I'm, there's a link there. The underworld. The, the water. The emotions in the water and the deep. Because heron can tra traverse the air, the earth, and the water quite easily. Of course, dexterity. So it's something else to work on. But it was also really, really linked to um, the underworld and the spirits of the underworld. So therefore, um, we can link it to the dead as well, and about and the cycles of life, death, and rebirth. That the souls of the dead will be carried on the wings of the heron, which is a beautiful thing, I think, to think. But also, we've got the birth um, story all told as kids. Where did I come from? Oh, the stork brought you. Yes, the stork brought you. <laughs> and I like that idea though because it comes from the heron, which is the stork, the stork of the heron. Um, bringing in life, bringing in new life, so sort of creation, and, and so coming from the underworld or from the other world and bringing life forward. There's a lot of myths about um, about the heron, and there's a lot of creation myths as well about the heron. That the heron stood into the pool, and all life came about around it, or well, it, it vomited up <laughs> the sun and the moon and the stars. We've all felt like doing that at times, but um, uh, you know, it's, it's a poetic way of thinking about that. Um, yeah, there's a lot of there's a couple of the, the the myths of heron go global. Like in Egypt, the heron is honoured as a creator of light and sacred to Ra. A double-headed heron is a symbol of prosperity. So anyone who wants to kind of draw or invoke a double-headed heron picture, maybe if it can help them with their prosperity. In China, the heron represents purity, strength, patience, and long a long life. And there's various myths around the world which show um, wisdom, good luck. Um, in Greek myths, we have more of a messenger feeling, as Athena sent a heron to Odysseus to say that she was watching, <laughs> always watching. And the Celtic myth also shows, um, many Celtic myths also show the heron as a messenger of the gods and of a superior intelligence. So yeah, it was in the African myths and other myths as well where the, 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 <laughs> the vomiting, <laughs> and the birth of all the life came. And I just wrote something, I don't know where I wrote it from, I think I kind of wrote my own version of something that I'd read, but it, I just wrote, and I'll read it, I don't often read the out words that I've written, but I'll just read this. Uh, it says, staring into the pool of wisdom, seeing ourselves and the world as we truly are, and in that space we stand tall and strong in our own truth, and Heron can teach us this, how to stand true in, how to stand strong in our own truth. So, I quite like that. that it's a nice visual to meditate on, maybe, that the heron is standing in this pool of wisdom and that reflection and that stillness. We see ourselves as we truly are and we face our fears and we face our challenges. Heron also is a very strong totem for the shamanic journey, um, especially journey... Well, we've got the underworld link there. We've had that already. But um, especially looking at the middle world and the upper world journey, we can work with the heron totem as a guide. And heron can communicate with other deities or other beings or species creatures for us, and be a middle, a middle bird <laughs> between us and aspects of the divine. And also, heron is thought in these meditations to do this quite kindly, to allow us to see our own challenges and to face our own challenges. And heron will do this with patience and focus, but also a kindness, because if you're coming up and wanting to deal with a lot of emotional stuff. Um, a, a lot of challenges, and it's it's nice to be tr treated with <laughs> kindly, but to the point. So, oh yeah, that's one thing I was gonna say. You you kind of have the shadow totem, the idea that when someone doesn't really want to deal with an animal, that they can come up as a shadow totem for them. And those who maybe are f afraid of or don't want to deal with the heron energy, possibly struggle with patience, with with social situations as well and the ease of communication and it's really int well it's not that interesting it's quite interesting there's someone that i had contact with that was um had a lot of emotional issues and dealing with people and struggled with um social groups or struggled with um 
be how to be in sort of social situations, how to be in that confident, graceful state. And they took a real hatred against this particular heron and wanted to shoot it. And I was probably going, oh, you're really angry that you can't shoot it. But I was wondered in those, you know, when I think about the shadow totem, if, if there's something that we feel this, uh, this distaste for, maybe because it represents the things that we are struggling to integrate into our own lives. So possibly looking at that is an animal that you, what animal do you not feel, it's another video I'm going on about, maybe I'll do this at some point soon, um, an animal that you feel that is something you fear or afraid of that may represent a part of your life that you're struggling to integrate. Um, we all have it, we all have it. <laughs> so, um, uh, beauty, grace, balance, wisdom, um, patience, strength, solitude. Something else well, before I go, actually I know I'm gabbling on, I have a tendency to do that. Um, that with the, the diversity and the, the aspects of the heron where they can balance these situations in, in the shallow waters, they're known in lots of the books I've read, there's, there's sentences use jack of all trades, jack of all trades, and that doesn't mean master of none, as the saying goes. They're just very good at doing lots of the dexter, dexterous energy of them, shows they're good at doing lots of different things. And so that's really interesting that maybe if you are there with a heron totem, you could be one of those people that is really good at doing a bit here, a bit there, a bit everywhere. And other people may say, see your lifestyle as unstable or not secure, but you are actually quite strong and secure in yourself. You may not conform to the norm of what a day to day. You probably don't. If you have heron totem, you definitely don't conform. <laughs> but you have your own st stability and your own strength. And that works so well for you that probably wouldn't work for other people. So even though you're a the people may look at your life and go, how are they doing that? It doesn't matter. You know you have their own, your own sense of strength and self that you can work that out. I really hope I haven't gabbled on for too long and hope that was interesting. I do have a tendency to kind of just um, go. I hope that was something that you've learned something from and found interesting and I also hope that you have your own stories of heroin that you would love to share with me as well. As always and um, thank you so much for watching and um, put your thoughts, likes and shares, comments and all that kind of mid jiggies and um, do all that for me. I would love that if you've enjoyed the video let me know and I will see you very soon with more Totem Tuesday. Goodbye!